Hello, today we're going to work on lesson 2.6, the algebra of functions. So let's go ahead and just get started. Functions can be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided just like terms can be. <clears throat> and you can see in the book, they do some really great examples on page 155 of these four operations that can be done <clears throat> to functions. And you can see they do some great examples here. Um, the function f of x is two over x minus four. <clears throat> and then they wanna add it to three x minus one. So they add it and get a common denominator. Now, if you are using Desmos, it's not as, um, and you actually want to use this for a real life problem, you wouldn't actually need to do the algebra of it. Uh, you could just leave it as that right there. <clears throat> we can also subtract them, we can also multiply them, and we can divide them. Okay. So, page 156 <clears throat> goes through how to subtract them, also getting a common denominator, how to multiply them, and then how to divide them. And then again, just like we talked about domains and other um, in the other lessons, a domain really only we have an issue when we have um, variables in the denominator. So we would have to see on like D, we have to see where this function um, could be equal to zero. So it can't equal four and it can't equal one third. And you can see that here in the denominator. <clears throat> and then in C, again, um, the denominator can't equal zero. So X cannot equal four there in um, B right here and C. So let's do the check it out to example. Um, so check it out too, is having us add and divide a function, but also evaluate that function at the value of two. So um, it's asking us to add these two functions together. So we are going to add them, which means we're just adding like terms. So we get x squared, a three x and an x is plus four x minus four. And then we have to evaluate it at the value of two. So two squared plus four times two minus four. And it looks like our answer is eight. <clears throat> and the cool thing is, is we could put that, these two functions and add them in Desmos and evaluate at two as well. So I wanna make sure that you're learning all these things in Desmos because they're just as important. So if we had y equals, and then we just said three x minus four, plus x squared plus x. That's what it looks like. And then the cool thing is, is we can just go up here to the gear and say, make a table, and then see that when we put in two, we get eight. So if you have not made a Desmos account, you need to because lessons 2.7 and 2.8, I'm definitely asking you to submit a link for some of the problems um, using Desmos. Okay, let's go back to the check it out. <clears throat> and I want you to show me your work, how you're getting there algebraically, but it's always great to be able to use Desmos just to verify and visually see um, your answer. So now we want to divide f divided by g. So we're going to take f 
and divide by g x squared minus x and evaluate that at two. Now remember the, um, the domain is the only thing that we have to be really concerned about. And that is when x squared minus x equals zero. So we have to factor out an x equals zero. So that means that x cannot equal zero and then this cannot equal one. So those are the only two issues but we're evaluating at two, so we should be fine. So six minus four over four minus two, and we get two over two is one. So there's our answer for that. So that's the some of the algebra function. The other um Oh, I wanted to check it out three. So check it out three is on page 157. And it's all about this uh, problem in example three. So it says the Global X Corporation has revenues modeled by the revenue function here, where T is in years since 2010. And um, the function is in millions of dollars. <clears throat> its operating costs are modeled by this function here, or T is the number of years since 2010, and C is in millions of dollars. So they're both in millions and T is in years in both. Okay. So check it out three says, find the pro profit function for Global X Corporation in example three, if the revenue and cost functions are given by this. So they're a little bit different. So revenue, um, so we wanna find the profit so we have to remember that profit, just like what they described here, profit is taking your revenue, what you're bringing in and subtracting away all of your costs. And then everything that's left over is your profit. And so we're gonna use this revenue function and check it out three and this cost function and check it out three to find our profit. So our profit function of T is going to be our revenue subtracting our cost. And so that is going to be 42 plus 2.2 T subtracting a cost of 34 plus 1.5 T. And it's important that we put the cost function in parentheses because we're subtracting. So we have to distribute that subtraction. So subtracting 34, subtracting 1.5 T. So we're gonna go ahead and combine like terms. So 42 minus 34 is eight. And then 2.2 minus 1.5 is 0.7 T, 0.7 T. And so this is the profit function. The other valuable algebra thing that we can do with functions is called compositions of functions. And the book gives a, a good explanation of compositions. So compositions, for instance, it says when converting the bottom, page 157. When converting between currencies or weights and measures, a function expressed in terms of a given unit must be restated in terms of a new unit. For example, if profit is given in terms of dollars, another function must convert the profit function to a different currency. <clears throat> <clears throat> so you might use this in, um, if your business uh, was in uh, the US and you were selling to currencies in Canada or another country, you would have to do this. So essentially, this says F is composed with G, which means we read it from left to right, but actually the way we um, evaluate the function is from right to left. So X goes into the G function first, and whatever comes out of that G function is now the input to the F function. 
<clears throat> so let's write that here. X goes into the G of X function. Okay. And then G of X goes into the F of X function. <clears throat> so let's, um, let's look actually at 33 and 35 first <clears throat> before we do this. Um, so let's, <clears throat> let's look at this in a table form first. So in 33, it says evaluate the f of x at negative one. So if we go to f of x right here, and when the input is a negative one, we get a negative two. So input is a negative one, we get a negative two. So 33 is a negative two. Now 35 says, evaluate f of x, the composition of f and g with a negative two. So that means we first go a negative two into g. So a negative two into g, we get zero. So let's just write this down. So f composed with g at a negative two. Okay, so that means we want g of a negative two first, which we said that output was zero. So now f of zero, because the output of g goes into f. So now we go to the f function at zero. is three. So we put negative two into X. I'm sorry, we put negative two as X into G, we got zero. Now that input, it goes into F and it comes out as three. Compositions are fun, I think. <clears throat> so let's look at the check it out number four. We have two functions here. Um, the f of s function, which is s squared minus two. And I don't like it when they use the letter s because I always, it looks like a five. And the g of s function is three s. And they're asking us to evaluate the composition of f of g at a negative one. So first we have to compose F with G. So F, so that means this is now the input of F. So wherever we see S in F, we have to put this whole function of G. So F composed with G of just S is going to be three S squared minus two. <clears throat> so f, my function on the left, is always my big outline of the function. It's this function here. And then the input for that function is this little output of the g function on the right. So 3s squared minus 2. So that means now we're going to evaluate that at a negative 1. So 3 times a negative 1 squared minus 2. And so that becomes a negative negative three squared minus two, which is nine minus two is seven. <clears throat> That's F composed with G. Now they want us to compose G with F. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna start here. So G composed with F. So this time the G function is our main function. So it's gonna be three times something and that something is the function of F. So S squared minus two. And they want us to evaluate that at negative one. So three and then negative one squared 
minus two. So three, and then a negative one squared is one minus two. So three times a negative one is a negative three. <clears throat> Aren't these fun? Okay, <clears throat> let's do a little bit bigger one. So number 55 in your book, um, on page 162, we have the F function and the G function, and they want us to compose F with G. So G goes into F, F is my big outline. So I have four times something minus one, that's my F. And the something is the G, G is going in there. So X plus one over four. And then the cool thing is I'm multiplying by four, so that cancels out. So I have X plus one minus one, which leaves me with X. So my domain is going to be all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. <clears throat> I can put anything in for X. Now let's look, they want us to do G composed with F. So now G is my big function. So I have something plus one over four. My big outline is the G function, something plus one over four. And that something is my F function. So my F function goes in there. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna simplify as best I can. And so I have four X minus one plus one over four. So those cancel, I'm left with four X over four and those cancels and we get X. <clears throat> well, that's cool because that also has all real numbers as the domain and they both compose with each other to make X. Very special case, very special case. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at number 63. I thought that would be a good one to press. <clears throat> so our F function is the square root of X plus one, and then our G function is a negative three X minus four. 63, they want us to still find the composition of F composed with G. So my big function is this thing. It's the square root of something plus one. And that something is my G function. And so I'm gonna put in there negative three X minus four plus one. And now simplify. So that is a negative three X minus three. And that's really all I can do. I could factor a negative one out, but it, or negative three out, but it doesn't really change anything. <clears throat> the only thing is, is for my domain, I have to be sure that this um, negative three X plus three has to be bigger than zero because um, bigger than or equal to zero because of, you can't take a square root of negative. So, oops, that's negative three X minus three. So if I add three to both sides, I get this. And then if I divide by negative three, I have to flip my symbol. So X has to be less than or equal to a negative one. Okay, so my domain then is negative infinity up to a negative one. And then we're gonna put a bracket around it because of the fact that we can include negative one. Okay. 
Okay. Now they also want us to find G composed with F. Okay. So G composed with F. means that g is my big function. So I have a negative three times something minus four. And the something is my f function. So the square root of x plus one. Okay. <clears throat> and so, there's really not much we can do here, but as far as the, the domain goes, again, this we're limited by this x plus one has to be greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. So x has to be greater than or equal to a negative one. So my domain is limited to a bracket around a negative one up to a positive infinity with a parenthesis. So take your time looking at those. Make sure to always email me if you have questions or if you want to set up a, a Zoom time for some tutoring. Okay, we're down to the last two problems we're going to work on. <clears throat> Number nine and 99 in the book. So on page 163, it says the number of copies of a popular mystery writer's newest release sold at a local bookstore during each month after its release is given by this function n, the number of copies. And the price of the book during each month after its release is given by this p. <clears throat> Find n times p and evaluate it at three and interpret your results. So n times p. P. Let's just find that function first. N times P. So the number of copies times the price is what we're doing. Let me share my speaker. <clears throat> so <clears throat> we are multiplying in words the number of copies times the price of the book. <clears throat> so if we're multiplying the number of copies times the price, that would be the revenue that is coming in because if they sold one copy for $13, then they brought in $13. Now they're not incorporating the cost here. <clears throat> they're just talking about um, how much they're selling the revenue that they're bringing in. And this is gonna be for X. So that's what they're bringing in. So we could multiply this using FOIL, but we really don't need to. So I would love you to practice, um, uh, especially on these, uh, real life contextual problems to use Desmos as much as possible. So let's go to Desmos and we want to um, we want to evaluate this revenue function, which is actually n times p, and we want to evaluate that at three is what they said. S4. So let's go ahead and share that to Desmos here. Um, and so we've got a negative five X plus 100 and then a negative 1.5 X plus 30. Whoops, I bumped it. Okay. And let's just do y equals. <clears throat> so we have a negative 5x plus 100 and negative 1.5x plus 30. And let's just go ahead and do our gear with our table because that's really nice. 
because then we can just go to the bottom of our table and say, we want to evaluate it three. And it gives us 2,167.5, and I'm going to say zero, because when we evaluate that at three, we're saying, what is the revenue if we sell three um, copies? So let's just write this out. If we sell three copies, because that's what N represents, the number sold, the revenue will be Um, oh, it's um, three is the number of months, three months. If we sell, if we, so let's just say, <clears throat> during the third month, <laughs> the revenue will be $2,167.50. Okay, <clears throat> so let's, let's go back to decimals for a minute so we can look at these individually to make sure we're understanding what we're doing. So <clears throat> the, <clears throat> The first function is the number of copies sold. So the first function, y equals a negative five x plus 100. If we look at, turn this one off here. Um, if we find the table. So if we put three in here, <clears throat> it says in the third month, we're gonna sell 85 copies. And then if we look at our revenue function, which we said is a negative 1.5x plus 30, um, and we look at that table and we put in three, um, the book is gonna sell for 25.50 uh, because we have a fixed cost of $30 per book. <clears throat> and so we're gonna sell 85 books, for 2550 and so we could just take 85 and multiply that by 2550 and we would get our 2167.50 pretty cool okay so let's go to our next our last problem for this lesson is number 101 <clears throat> Number 101, it says the exchange rate from US dollars to euros on a particular day is given by the function f of x here, where x is in US dollars. If Global X Corporation has revenue given by the function r of t, oops, I have x and t's. Yes, that's true. Where t is the number of years since 2009, x is dollars. Um, they want us to find the composition of r. F composed with R, pardon me, F composed with R. So let's go ahead and do F composed with R of T and explain what it means. Okay, so this is all since the year 2009. So we're not, we're just explaining what the function means. We're not evaluating it anything. So let's go ahead and share my screen so we can do this on paper. So F composed with R. So that means the function F is our big function. And the function F is going to be 0 0.75 times something. That's the big function of F. And that something is the revenue function of R, which is 40 plus 2T or T is the number of years.
Okay. So this is going to become <clears throat> 0.75 times 40 plus 0.75 times 2. So this should be 30 plus 1.5 T. And so <clears throat> this is going to be um, the euros. So this is going to be the value of our revenue in euros because we took the, the exchange rate from the US to euros. So it's the value of our revenue because that's our R function, the value of our revenue in euros after T years. <clears throat> so what this composition does is something that we could do in two steps. We could say, okay, what's our revenue after two years in the US dollars? And then we'll take that and say, okay, now let's figure out the exchange rate. But what we could do is we, we created this new function that does the revenue and the exchange rate all in one. So that's really what a composition does. It's pretty cool. We do it all the time. You just don't realize it. And that ends our lesson 2.6, catch me back for 2.7.